Hello everyone, I am Bridget Ayer here and we're doing a special edition to feature a really great ministry in Noblesville, Indiana called uh, the Society of St. Vincent de Paul Food Pantry and Noble Cause Resale Shop. And our guests today are Calissa Harvey there in the background. She's a volunteer coordinator. And we've got Dee Riccardi who is the general manager. So thank you so much for being here. Um, for having us. Now, uh, Dee, we're going to start with you. I, you are both social distancing, so that's great. Uh, and we will talk about that uh, as we go on in the interview. But Dee, tell, um, tell our listeners and our viewers here the mission of the St. Vincent de Paul Society Food Pantry that you are running there. Tell us a little bit about that and what, what you're doing there. Well, the Society of St. Vincent de Paul that we operate here helps with some uh, financial assistance for some people, and then we also have a food pantry. You know, the, our resale shop supports those projects for us. So we provide minimal assistance during the year for our clients financially, and then on a bi-weekly basis, we provide food. So you had mentioned, and we this is our second interview. <laughs> our first time we had a little uh, trouble with our audio, but... Um, you had mentioned that you've had an increase since this um, pandemic has uh, happened. Can you talk about that and how you're um, serving your clients right now? I guess um, we have about 20% of the volume of people that we're assisting. 20% are new people. First of okay. all, for them to ask for any kind of assistance. So I, I believe them to be just people who have lost their jobs recently. And um, trying to make some tough choices about what bills are going to be next. Um, but, uh, now, um, so Pete, the one thing that's really great about uh, your food pantry is it's really like, almost like a grocery store. It has refrigerators and healthy food, and it's, it's not like your typical, well, I don't know what a typical, what maybe people think of a typical food pantry. You have a lot of great food and it's really just like a grocery store. How are you, um, how do people get their food now? Okay, so, um, so we, did, we did design this pantry to be nutritious. Okay. So it, has, it, it has a number of things that are have uh, fresh produce and we have frozen and fresh um, vegetables and fruits. We, we have some dinners that are healthier choices than some of the others. And, uh, and then we have a, a lot of different protein sources to offer. So like a stainless foam of chicken breast or uh, a little pork roast or eggs and cheeses. Um, we, we designed it based on nutrition. And uh, right now, what we're doing, what we're doing um, where in the past we have been, where each client selected their own items, so that they got exactly what they wanted based on a number of points that we gave them to work with. Every item had a point value and every family had a number of points that they could spend while they were there. But um, now we're doing it a little different. We're, we're just um, grafting in their three favorite things that we hope to get in the two and we're bagging up things for them. So you actually have a lot of your volunteers would be in that higher risk group in terms of being um, maybe older um, in that in that risk group. So, what are you doing for volunteers, or how are you managing that end of the of the this dynamic? Quite a few of our existing volunteers that we have stayed on, and uh, that's what's keeping us floating right now. Actually, is um, we do we did have to step up, but we have quite a few of our existing volunteers. And they are in an age group that's been designated as high risk. So um, we're still looking for some new ones. Yeah. Yeah. So our young people that are listening or watching, um, tell us the um, website that they can go to to volunteer. We, we are at sbbtnoblecause.com. So it's the same thing to the call initial, noble, noble, 
And I'll put that I'll put that up on the screen um, for the video thing. And we'll also, if we use this for Catholic Radio Indy, we will go ahead and put this on the podcast so people can go there and click a link and then go to volunteer. So so what are your needs in addition to volunteers? How can other how can people help? Do you want people to donate food or would you prefer to have cash donations or how would you like people to help? Well, we are, we are able to order products by pallets. As we, in the past, we have three or four pallets a week coming in. So um, we are able to order by pallets. So if we didn't have the extra money to spend it, that, that would be the better way to do it. We also anticipate assisting people with their uh, financial needs, their uh, utilities and rent because of lack of income for more than the usual. So um, we hope to, the, the retail shop being closed, it would be helpful if we had more cash for that as well. Okay, so then people can go to svdpnoblecause.com to donate um, and they can just click the donate button. Um, if, if we could get, I know, I know you two are social distancing, which you've been really good about this. Um, if we could get D, you and Calissa to switch places, um, yeah. we'll talk to Calissa about the, um, what, how, what, what volunteers do and how you're working um, those out. So here we've got Calissa Harvey who just joined us um, there. Um, Calissa, you're the volunteer coordinator. Tell us how things are operating right now with your volunteers. And then if someone wanted to volunteer, what, what do they do and how do you train them? Or is it hard? I asked you like, I asked you three questions there. So take your stab there. You're good at that. <laughs> um, actually, things are running quite smoothly right now. The first day we started this, um, we were a bit haphazard, but we've gotten better every day. And I think we've almost got it perfected where we are safe and well sanitized and organized. Um, probably the, the most, the primary thing a volunteer will do will be to help fill bags. Um, I want to clarify in case a listener gets um, confused. D is correct. We do ask for their three most needed items. However, they get much more than three items. We just want to make sure we can fulfill their most immediate needs as far as what, what they can get from the pantry. Um, so our volunteers are bagging those items for the client. The, the volunteers are not moving around the pantry, but the, the grocery cart is. And then that grocery cart goes out the door by another volunteer and is loaded into the client's trunk. So we're getting by with seven to eight volunteers a day. On a normal day, back before all of this happened, we needed about 30 volunteers. So, um, but right now, just to keep the social distance thing able, um, we're just limiting it to seven or eight. So, you'll help us fill food bags. You'll help us take food to the cars. You may help us restock shelves. We also need people willing to go to our grocery store. Right. There are grocery stores who are very generous with us about their their product that they no longer need. We would love to have people visit grocery stores and pick up those foods and deliver to us. We first want anybody interested in volunteering um, to go to our website. We, we cannot accept off the street volunteers. Um, so please go to our website, look for the volunteer button, very brief, form to fill out, and I'm doing my best to follow up on those within 48 hours. Um, and that first initial follow-up will be by email, and we'll talk via email and get them started as soon as we can. We're so when, so when I, I have two more questions, so well, I have a lot more questions, but but what are where are you located and what hours are you operating? Have your hours changed in terms of operation or talk about where you're located and what your hours of operation are in terms of for clients coming in and for volunteers. I guess it's the same. Are they the same hours roughly? We're on a, on 1391 Greenfield Avenue in Noblesville. Okay. It's right between Highway 37 and uh, South 10th Street, which is also Allisonville Road. Um, there's a sign out front that says 
you know, they'll cause resale shop. They'll see our building it has a brick front and kind of an army green colored side. Um, I forget what you asked me. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. what can they, or hours, I'm so sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Ah. <laughs> um, so we have reduced, again, since our store is closed, we have reduced our pantry hours just to protect our volunteers. So the pantry and our need for volunteers will be every Wednesday from 10 until 2, and then again Wednesday evening from 6.30 till 8, and Saturday morning from 9 until noon if somebody wants to actually volunteer in the future. Okay, well, let me ask you this. Now, there might be people, now you said you had 20% new, new clients coming. I mean, there may be people that are middle income who've never lost their job before that need help. How do you determine eligibility? And, you know, someone might, like I said, maybe they're in the service industry or they're in a small business and, and they, they need help. What, how, do, how are you managing that end of it? You get my question? Yes, right now all we're, all we're asking is to see a Hamilton County ID. That's all we have to see, a passport. Um, just something that gives, us, gives them an identity for us. So really, um, and you really do serve Hamilton County. You're not, pe people aren't coming from Marion County up there. You're really exclusively for Hamilton County. Is that, is that correct? Yes, and, and people often just think of Noblesville and Carmel, but I want them to realize we're serving Sheridan and Arcadia and Cicero and Westfield, besides Noblesville, Fishers, and Carmel. We're serving a large area, and um, volunteers and financial support and prayers will keep all this going for us. So what has it been like um, for, I guess, both of you and and D, if you want to jump back in here too, you can. But um, what's it been like for you to, to be, I mean, this is history right now, what's happening. I mean, nothing like this. Mass has never been suspended. You know, this is just really, we're living in, we're living in a time, a historic time that'll be written about. What's it been like for you to be kind of on the front lines of this, uh, I guess, pandemic and serving those most in need. What's it been like for you? I mean, I know you do this all the time, so maybe. Uh, it is something, you know, you're seeing it at Meyer, you're seeing it at Kroger, you're seeing it at the CBS. Everybody's stepping up, the hospital, they're all stepping up. And, and they are at risk, everyone is. And have kids and taking the money to at risk. Yeah. We have less risk here than at any of those places I just said, not having to go to the hospital. So we are, of what I volunteering over at the Merciful Help Center at Our Lady of Mount Carmel at that food pantry. And it's just amazing and just kind of what you've talked about, how quickly you were able to adjust in terms of social distancing and just putting in all these um, just common sense things to keep your volunteers safe, your clients safe, but yet keep serving everybody because this is, you know, the time when, you know, there is a greater need. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a daunting task, but um, we wouldn't be here doing it if we didn't think it was the right thing to do. Right. Well, um, again, could you give your webpage, uh, Calissa, and then if anybody wanted to either make a, a financial contribution or become a volunteer, they could do that on your webpage, and that's really where you want people to go first, right? SBDP Noble Cause. Dot com and there's a donate button and there's a volunteer button you can click one or click both um, and we'll get back to the volunteer within 48 hours well that sounds great well um, 
Dee Riccardi and Calissa Harvey, thank you so much for um, your work there. And uh, maybe we'll have to check back in after this is all over and you can tell us how many more people you've served and how many pounds of food you've been sending out to help all these people. And then there's one other thing that we had talked about um, in our previous interview was that people that have items that they want to donate in terms of household items, they just need to hold off on that until you guys are actually back open. Is that correct? That is the ideal. If they could just put it in the garage, put our name on it, and when this is over, bring it on over. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much again for being our guest today. Um, God bless you. We'll, we'll be in touch, okay? Thank you. Thank All right. Bye-bye.